Thank you for joining us today at jewishtv.media. The topic for today is a discussion about our understanding of the Jewish Messiah. Quite often missionaries will come and boil down the differences between Judaism and Christianity to the question of who is the Messiah. Or they'll say the question is only whether the Messiah has come once or twice. But in fact the differences between Judaism and Christianity go much deeper than that. In fact, the question about who is the Messiah is somewhat irrelevant once we understand what is the Messiah. What is the definition of the Messiah? Before we talk about anything, we need to make sure that we're on the same page. We need to make sure that when I say Messiah and you say Messiah, we're talking about the same thing. Unfortunately, in the debates and the polemics that have taken place between Jews and Christianity, we've really been passing each other like ships in the night, where we say Messiah, but we mean something completely different. When we speak about salvation, we mean something completely different. And when we talk about many such things, we have completely different understandings and definitions. So let's start with the, the word Messiah. What does it mean? The word Messiah is just an anglicized way of saying the Hebrew word Mashiach. It is not a translation. And so therefore, when you look through the Jewish scriptures, if you just went to an English translation, you'd hardly ever find the word Messiah there. The reason is because Messiah is not a translation, as I just said. What would you find instead? Well, what you would find is the word anointed. You see, Mashiach, the Hebrew word, Mashiach comes from the word limshoach, to pour or to anoint, to apply uh, some kind of liquid to a solid. And so when we speak about it in a, in a religious sense, in the sense that it's referenced in the Bible, what it's speaking of is the anointing of something or someone with special consecrating Oil. So you can find this in Exodus chapter 29 and Exodus chapter 30, where Moses speaks of um, this special ingredients that are used to put together and make up this special oil. And then it speaks about using this oil to anoint um, the vessels in the tabernacle, to anoint the tabernacle itself, um, to anoint Aaron and his sons. And this was done and used in a way to initiate um, either the vessels or the people into the service of God. Um, it doesn't stop there. You see, the priests were not the only ones to be anointed. Jewish kings were also anointed with oil. So, for example, Samuel anoints King Saul. And likewise, King David was anointed. And anybody who was anointed with oil can be referred to as an anointed one. In Hebrew, that's Mashiach. So when we speak about Messiah, when we use the English word Messiah, it is best to rec recognize and remember that we're just speaking about somebody anointed and that this is not referring to any one exclusive individual but could be referring to anybody. Well then how do we come up with this, uh, this title, The Messiah, with a definite article, article, the Messiah, that we all understand as a king who will come in the future. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the way the Bible works. What I mean by that is we need to understand that in the Bible there are four types of writings. The Bible has narrative stories which tell over about the history of the Jewish people, their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, these stories take up a large part of the book of Genesis and many other books in the Bible which continue the narrative throughout Jewish history. You then have a second type 
of writing in the Jewish scriptures, and that is um, the legalistic rules. In other words, the way the, way the Torah is um, instructing us for our lives, how God wants us to follow his rules and his commandments. And that takes up quite a large portion of the five books of Moses, um, all the different laws. You then have a third category, which are wisdom literature and poetry, such as the book of Proverbs, and you have the book of uh, Psalms. Uh, that was another category. Uh, Ecclesiastes would be another example. But then you finally have a fourth type of writing, and that is prophetic. Um, these prophetic passages can be split into another further two categories, short-term prophecy and long-term prophecy. Short-term prophecy, such as the prophecy of Jeremiah in the 70 years, um, the 70 years that were prophesied for the destruction of uh, Babylon and the 70 years of exile of the Jewish people into Babylon. Uh, then you have long-term prophecy, um, such as the prophecies that you will find throughout scriptures which speak about the end days, the days that are to come at the end where you have many promises made to Israel and the Jewish people about a utopia that we will live in at that time when Israel will live in tranquility and in peace and when the world will be filled with the knowledge of God. And with those passages which speak about the future redemption, which speak about the future utopian age, amongst those passages you'll find references to a king who will rule during that time. And being that he's a Jewish king, he will be anointed with oil. And that's how we come with, up with the definition of the Messiah. It refers to a Davidic king who will rule in the future at a time of, of universal peace and universal knowledge of God. Thank you for joining us today at JewishTV.media. Jewish TV dot media.